Hello and welcome to Sketch Together. My name is Pablo Stanley. And before we start, I want to thank you guys for all your support. We just got to 7,000 subscribers and that's a huge milestone for me. So I just want to say I'm truly, truly thankful. So today we're going to learn how to create micro interactions using the behaviors feature from Flinto. Behaviors are the perfect way to create interactions that happen on the same screen, like buttons, uh, switches, or loading animations, or even scroll-based animations. And this is going to be a two-part tutorial. On this first episode, we're going to learn the basics by creating a switch and a button. On the next one, we're going to learn how to create scroll-based animations. Okay, so let's get started. Let me show you right away what uh, this can do. So here I have some demos of some stuff that I created. For example, I have uh, a button. A button, it doesn't look like much, but it's uh, it's pretty much just like a, it has a hover effect, uh, a hover state, and then a pressed state. And then also, for example, another example will be like having a switch. A switch, sometimes you have the same screen that has multiple switches. So it will be kind of a nightmare to create uh, one screen per each state when a switch is on and a switch is off. So then you just create one behavior of one switch, and that switch, you can duplicate it in multiple screens. So let me preview it. For example, here, I am in the same screen, and on the same screen, I have this micro interaction of this switch. And I can even connect, make a switch that like connects from one screen to another. I turn this switch on, and then it turns, brings me to another screen. And I can go back over here, and now it brings me to another screen that, that it has uh, the, the switches on. Okay, so let me show you another cool trick that you can do with this. Uh, for example, you can control uh, scrolling uh, uh, effects. So for example, I want this little guy, uh, the, the photo to minimize and, and then the, uh, the header to stay stay sticky, stay on the top fixed once I scroll. So that's something that you can do also with behaviors. And then here's another one, a little bit more complex. I really like this. I try to mimic, let me uh, make this a little bit bigger. I tried to mimic the uh, the tw Twitter's uh, like button, and I made this animation. And as you can see, it just it, I can reuse this animation multiple times in the same screen. I can add multiple of these, or add, add it in multiple screens, and then and I didn't have to create a different screen for each animation. They all are independent in the same screen. Okay, so here I have a sketch file for my samples, and uh, you can download this file on the resources. And here we're going to create our own behaviors. You have I have here three screens: one where I have my behaviors, where I'm going to design them, and then here I have the different screens where I'm actually going to put those behaviors. So, okay, so let's just start by first uh, sending to Flinto. So I'm going to go to my plugins, send to Flinto. Let's go. And okay, let's just, let's get started. The how you create a behavior is by selecting multiple objects or probably just one. And then over here, I have my little button that's, that is, has like a magic wand and that's the behavior uh, creator. So I click on, once I have those selected, I click, click on behavior and now I am in the behavior designer. So here in the behavior designer, it's going to, on the top, you're going to see the different states of your behaviors. So it, it starts always with the initial state of your design, how it is designed originally. And that's on that state, you cannot edit the, the elements. Let me zoom in so you can see. Because that's already designed that way. So it, it is not supposed to change that. If you want to change how it looks originally, then you have to change it on the designer, on the design screen. Over here, what I can do is add different states of this design. So for example, I have my initial one. And over here on the top left, I can add a new state. So I go ahead and add a new state and I can name it. So for example, this one is going to be uh, on. And actually, my initial, I want to call it off. So I'm going to call it off. And I can just double click there and I can uh, and just rename it. So over here, now, once it's on, I want to move this, oops, I want to move this circle to the right, just like that. And then I also want to change the color of the background. So on this state, instead of gray, I'm going to change it to, I don't know, to probably a nice, a nice blue. Why not? Okay, there you go. So now, and in, in, if I switch between the states, I can actually see how the animation is going to look. If I want to change the timing on the animation, I can just select the elements and change the, the timing over here. So for, for example, here is it's just like in any other uh, transition, that like it, just like in the transition designer, I can change the spring or I can change it to classic. I'm going to keep it just simple for this. But now, right now, if I go save and exit, by the way, you can also name this behavior. I'm going to call it switch. 
And now I can save it and exit over here. And now if I preview it, nothing happens, right? Nothing is, is, is going on. The thing is that I haven't added any gestures to it. So I can go back to my behavior, design, to my behavior. So over here, I have my, my element. I can edit it over here. I can go to edit the behavior. And over here, I need to add first a tap gesture that takes me to the on state. So I'm going to make the whole thing tappable. And I'm going to add a gesture that is tap. And then this tap gestures will take me to the on state. And that's it. Now let's test it. Let, let me make this a little bit bigger. There you go. As you can see, let me go back. If I press it, it turns on. So now, but it doesn't go back, right? It doesn't, it doesn't turn off. That's because I haven't added uh, another tap that takes me back. So that's, that's what I need to do on the on. Now I need to add another gesture, a tab gesture that takes me back to the on, to the off, sorry. And now let's preview it. And now it's working. I tap and it turns on and off. If I want to add another gesture, I could do that too. For example, over here, I want to actually add a gesture that's, that is a left sw swipe, sorry, a, a right swipe, a right swipe that will take me to the on. And this is going to be applied only to the circle. So I got it here and it's going to take me to on. Let's preview it. And now it also does this by, uh, by dragging. There you go. And I can do the same over here. I do the opposite where at the gesture, it's actually left swipe and the target is going to be off. And that's it. Pretty simple. Turn this. <laughs> there you go. Uh, if, if you scroll too much, if you swipe too much, it, it will go off. So when you're showing your prototypes, just make sure not to do that. Uh, cool, so that's working. That's your first behavior. That's, that's simple, right? And the cool thing is that now I can apply it anywhere on my design. So I can just copy this guy and I can put it over here, for example. I can put it over here, let me zoom in. I can put two of these and let me make this my home screen just so I can preview it and let's see it. And now I have it here and it's all happening on the same screen. This micro interaction is just happening there. That's a cool thing about using behaviors. If it is a button or a switch or a toggle or, a, or an animation that is looping, you just want to create one and then duplicate it in the different elements where you're going to use it. So now let's create a behavior for our button. The button is going to be a little bit more complicated because this one has a hover state and a pressed state. So let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing, I want to select those two elements. So I'm going to select those and then I'm going to press behavior. Now I'm in the behavior designer. I have my initial state and I want to start adding more states. So I'm going to add first the hover state. So I'm going to call this hover. And then I'm going to, on the hover, I'm just going to change the background color to a different color. So the background color is going to be a little bit lighter, a list. That's how I like it, my hover states. And then I'm going to do a pressed state. And the pressed state is going to be a little bit darker, actually. So this is going to be pressed. Now here I'm going to change the color of the background. And it's going to be darker, way darker. There you go. So it goes from initial to hover to pressed. So now the, I have all the states, but I haven't added any any gestures that take me to those states. So let's start adding those. So the first thing that I want to add is a hover, right? So when I'm, my mouse is over this uh, layer, I want to go to the hover state. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to add uh, a gesture that is, says mouse over, over. So mouse over, and then the target is going to be hover. There you go. And over here, I want to, once it's the mouse is over, I want to add the press state. So here, I'm going to select the same guy. I'm going to add um, uh, a touch down state. So the touch down takes me to the pressed state. <laughs> Hold on, so yeah, there you go. Touch down, the target is going to be the pressed state. There you go. So now I added that. So let's preview it. And I have my hover state and I have my press state. But once I press, it, it stays there. <laughs> it stays there, and if I mouse out, it just stays there. So I need to add more gestures that uh, go that take the button back to the initial state or to the hover state. So over here, the first thing that I want to do here on the hover state, I already added a touch down uh, uh, gesture that takes me to the press state, but I want to add another one where if the mouse is out. So I want to add a gesture that's going to be mouse out, and it's going to take me to the initial one, to the initial state. So now let's preview it. And now it has a hover. When I hover over it, it changes the color. And when I hover out, it changes the color again to the initial state. Hover in, hover out. There you go. Cool. So now, now we need to fix the other one. Whereas uh, if you 
I press it, and then it stays there. So I need to, to do one that is touch up. So touch down takes me to the press state. Touch up should take me back. So over here on the press state, I want to add another one. I want to add another gesture. And this one is going to be touch up because I stopped pressing. And then the touch up is going to take me back to the hover state. There you go. So let's see. Bow, 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 bow. And if I hover out, it goes back to the initial state. There you go. Really easy, right? Really easy. Okay, cool. So now let's do a hard state. This, this one is pretty simple. This one, uh, for example, sometimes you don't have, uh, over here it was really easy to do this because uh, uh, this is a shape, this is a rectangle, and I can change the color of it really quickly here. But sometimes you have uh, a, a little bit more complex uh, uh, shapes, like a heart, that it, you're not able to change the color on Flinto. You actually have to have both states at the same time. So what I'm going to do, I already have those two design. I already have the, the the initial state, which is gray, and then the pressed state, which is red. So I'm going to actually align those two. Once they're aligned, I'm going to create a behavior. But before that, I want to change the opacity of the red state to zero, because that's the initial state, right? So I'm going to, to select these two, and now I'm going to turn the behavior. Okay, now I'm the behavior designer. Ooh, I can barely see it, but it's there, it's there. Those two, the heart red and the heart gray are there. I'm going to add another state when it's, uh, when it's pressed. So pressed when it's liked. And it's going to be really simple. It just, it's going to be like a switch. So from here, when it's going to take me to the other state, the press state, I want to change the opacity of the red heart to 100%. So it goes from here to this. So over here, I just want to add a gesture. There's a tap that takes me to the press state. And then over here, if I want to turn it off, I'm going to do the opposite, right? A tap takes me back to the initial state. Now let's preview it. And I'm going to call this heart, by the way. Let's preview it, and now it works. I have my switch, have my button, and I have my my like heart button. So that's it. That's the cool thing about this uh, these behaviors because it allows you to add micro interactions like this and then put them anywhere you want. I need to copy it and then paste it over here. Okay, now I have it here, and let's let's even add a button. Yeah, let's put a button here. Let's put a switch. Why not? Do you want to keep following Kanye West, Kanye Asada, or not? <laughs> Home screen, there you go. And now let's maximum, maximum power. I can like it. I can say, let's do this. Yeah, I can turn it off, turn it on. All these micro interactions are happening on the same screen. And that's the power of behaviors. It's uh, really cool. If if you want to take it to the next level, imagine yourself creating a library of, uh, instead of a style guide, you have a components guide, you have your uh, behaviors guide, right? Whereas that uh, you have all your buttons with all the interactions and you have your library. If you want to use it in diff multiple projects, you always have your button and you don't have to create a button again. You can just copy from one file to another and it will work. Hopefully you like this. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. On the next um, video, I'm actually going to show you something really quick, really cool of how to make use behaviors for scrolling so for example I made this and I actually created this uh, this this animation this is scrolling behavior uh, with the behavior designer and I'm going to show you how to do it it's really simple hope you liked <laughs> to use behaviors let me know if you have any questions subscribe like all that crap see you in the next one